Hi guys, it's early here today. Welcome back to another episode of Keto in the Kitchen with Jasmine. Today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a keto slow roasted chicken and we're going to make yellow squash on the side from the drippings from the chicken and then also i'm doing a cucumber and red onion salad but with the cucumber red onion salad like i made in the past with stevia today i'm not putting any sugar in it because um, i actually didn't like the flavor of the stevia in the cucumber and red onion salad so i hope you guys enjoy this recipe also, I did want to mention that another recipe I'm going to be making today is just a snack. So it's going to be a delicious, healthy snack that I can munch on while the chicken is roasting and the vegetables are cooking. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start by cutting the whole chicken out of its bag. And then I'm going to remove the giblets and I'm going to rinse the chicken in cold water. And actually there were no giblets in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the fat um, around its buttocks. There's no better way to say that. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to reserve that for future recipes because that fat can be used for different things. And I'll show you some video of that. Now I'm going to remove the skin from the breast of the bird. Now I'm going to take a bowl and I'm going to pour in one cup of white wine and one cup of vegetable broth. I'm going to mix it together and I'm going to pour it in the baking dish. The next thing I'm going to do is salt and pepper the bird. I'm using sea salt and regular black pepper. I'm going to sprinkle it on the outsides of the bird and then also in the cavity of the bird. I can't actually show you me filming while I'm salting and peppering inside of the cavity of the bird, but you actually get the point. I'm sure you guys know how to do that. Um, but I am going to show you how to make the herbed butter sauce that we're going to be putting under the hood of the chicken. And right now, what you might want to do also as a side note is just set your oven temperature to 300. Once it's up to temp, you're going to turn it down to 275. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to sprinkle on the outside of the chicken is going to be onion powder, garlic powder, smoked paprika, and sage. And I'm going to sprinkle that liberally as well as in the cavity of the bird to give it a nice flavor.
Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to take a whole stick of butter. I'm going to slice it up because it's still not as soft as I'd like it to be. Then I'm going to put it in my food processor and I'm going to put the spices in there. So the herbs basically so that I can um, rub that under the hood of the chicken. You can make your own seasoning, but basically what I'm sticking with is one half teaspoon each of salt and pepper, smoked paprika, sage, and then it's one teaspoon each of garlic and onion powder. All right, so with the smoked paprika, I actually dropped some of it on the floor, and then some of it went in my food processor, so I showed you video on that. And that is what my herbs butter looks like processed. What you're actually seeing there is the butter or the herbs mixture, herbs butter, that's underneath the skin and sitting on top of the chicken breast on the bird. And what it's going to do now is it's going to go into the oven at 275 degrees. It'll cook maybe approximately three to four hours or until it has an internal temperature of 165 degrees. You're gonna check it and baste it throughout. You're going to leave it uncovered because you're going to slow roast it. I'll show you the process as we're going along. What I just showed you was a rendered chicken fat that I cut off from the bird. And what I'm going to do with this, I stored it in an air tight container, is I'm going to use it for other recipes. So other recipes might call for fat or things like that. And that's what that will be used for. Okay, so to start, we're going to check our chicken in 30 minutes. And then after that, it's going to be every maybe 10 to 15 minutes, depending on how well it's cooking, because we're going to have to baste it as we're going along. And for that, what we're going to use is a brush. We're going to be dipping that in the drippings, which consists of vegetable broth. And also it consists of white wine and then the butter and the herbs. So we'll be using that to baste the chicken as we're going along. So I just set my timer for 30 minutes. I just checked the chicken. It doesn't need to be basted yet. I'm going to show you video on what that looks like. So we're gonna stick it back in the oven for another 30 minutes. I just checked the chicken and I'm going to go ahead and baste it and then I'm going to put it back in the oven for approximately another 30 minutes. And I just wanted to mention that I do have the chicken on the lower rung next to the heater. It seems like no matter what I do, I can't get the light to go just right, just what I need it to do right now. So for right now, unfortunately, this is gonna have to suffice. That being said, what I did is I turned up my oven to 400 degrees and I let the, ch the chicken cook for 20 minutes just to get a nice golden crust. I pulled it out, I turned the oven temperature down to 275 degrees, and what I'm going to do, because the internal temperature is not yet 165 degrees, is I'm going to let it cook and, or let it bake until it is, and then I'm going to pull it out. What I'll do in the meantime is I'll make the other ingredients for the other recipes.
All right, so I took some video of the chicken and also the squash in the pot, and I used a lot of the leftover broth that was in the bottom of the chicken, and I think it's going to be really good. We'll find out as we go along. I'm still trying to get the best angle here. So what I did is I took some more video of the squash that I'm cooking and it looks like it's cooking really nice. And I'm going to wait a little bit to see if maybe the lighting changes with the sun moving in its position before I start on the delish healthy snack. I've got a really good recipe for that. Okay, so I've decided what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try to work with the lighting that I'm given right now and I'm going to make the delish healthy snack. So I'm going to chop up walnuts, pecans, and almonds and I'm going to add them to my bowl. The next thing we're going to add is one cup of unsweet coconut flakes. The next ingredient you're going to add is two tablespoons of coconut oil. Now add one tablespoon of low sodium soy sauce. What you'll add now is one half teaspoon each of black pepper, smoked paprika, nutmeg, cumin, garlic, and onion powder. Next, go ahead and give it a stir and add one teaspoon of chili powder. And now two tablespoons of nutritional yeast. And two tablespoons of stevia. Next, add one half cup of sugar-free maple syrup. And then stir it to combine and add it to a baking tray lined with parchment paper. Next, turn on your oven to 350. And then what you're going to do is once it's ready, you're going to stick the tray in the oven and let it cook for about 15 minutes to see if it's done. If it is done, pull it out. If it's not, let it bake for a little bit longer. And I wanted to show you some video of what my squash looks like. So I did take some video of that. It's, co it's cooking really nicely. In fact, um, I had a squirrel just come up to my door and look in and through the sliding glass door. And I think he was looking for a little treat, but I didn't give it to him. So. Okay, so my meal is done and I just wanted to say what I did is I actually made the slow roasted chicken for um, one of my viewers that asked me to. It was a great idea. Thank you. I'm going to make several meals out of this because obviously I can't eat this by myself. Um, so I did take some video of the squash that's finished. The chunks were huge because I got it out of my uh, neighbor's garden and my snacks are also done that's not a very good shot of that because of the lighting still but mm, i'm going to and taste that mm, it's good really good well i hope you guys have enjoyed this recipe because i know i've enjoyed making it for you have a great day